thank you to our sponsors who always remain, remain anonymous. This class was sponsored in Nishmat Aram Chaim Ben Yochevet. I'd like to dedicate this class to everybody who uh, thinks they're fooling somebody. Today's topic is who are you fooling? Be honest, I'm happy all you guys came today. I've been going through some stuff this week, so I'm thankful. The reason I chose this topic is sometimes we do things and we're like, oh, you know what, nobody will see me. It's all right, God will forgive me, I'm all right. Who are you fooling is my question. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? You grab your phone, or you say, thank you, Hashem, for letting me wake up? When you wake up in the morning, do you say, thank you, Hashem, for not giving me any problems? Thank you for giving me what I have. I know that was saying, and I love this saying, I say it every lecture that I have. This is what, Shir, Shir, Samech, Bechilko. Who is rich? Who's happy? Is one who is happy with what he has. Everybody's focused on what they want. Not really focus on what they need. It's very important. You guys are growing up in a society where it's like cell phone, Facebook, everybody's putting up their pictures online. So you're like, oh, maybe they're doing something right. I'm doing something wrong. My man has a Rolex on. Check it out. They go on vacation every week. We don't know what's important. Essentially, we're looking for what we want, not what we need. But the majority of times, whatever we want is not really good for us. Because if we don't have it, we don't have it for a reason. People ask Hashem, help me make some money. Please help me make some money. How come I can't make no money? I can't find a job. Help me find my soulmate. How can I find my soulmate? How do I keep Shalom bias? It's a very difficult world out there. And if your phone is in your way, to be, I'll be honest with you, my phone is always in my way. I'm in my phone every five seconds. Why? Because I always try to make sure the events, the culture boys, the music. Is it right? Not the greatest thing in the world, but guess what? There's many positive things to have in a cell phone. And having social media depends on what you have in your phone. You have Torah any time on your phone? Do you watch at least one lecture a week? Something. Do you learn something? Or you like to play Fortnite for seven hours out of the day? I know you guys know what I'm talking about. We're going to bring up two topics today. One of the topics relating to the men. One of the topics relating to the ladies because Baruch Hashem they came, which I'm very happy. Whoever is here today, consider you guys adults. We have a young crowd, but this young crowd, I know them personally. I know that they're adults, though, real adults. Because it takes a real adult to come here to know that, oh, listen, here's another class. Some guy is speaking. What is he going to talk about? So the fact that you guys came, Baruch Hashem. Since they say ladies first, let's start with the ladies. It's very important for a Jewish girl to know what she's worth, know that she's She's Jewish first of all, and she's going to be an example for other people. People are going to watch you, they'll talk to you. You know, somebody gave me an example the other day. It's not the greatest example, but I'll tell it to you. He said, a man, he's like a fork. Okay, I'm like, explain to me. He goes like, a man, he could just eat here, eat here, eat over there, wash the fork, and guess what? It's still a fork. That's the truth. But a woman, she's a napkin. A napkin, you use a napkin one time. Two times, three times, it's already dirty, dirty. Nobody wants to use a dirty napkin. Women have to understand that. It's very important. It may be funny to you guys, but in actuality, it's true. Some of you guys are 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, even older. You ever ask yourself, what's next? Who am I fooling? What am I doing? Did I accomplish anything? Are my parents happy with me? Is Hashem happy with me? Most importantly, am I happy with myself? Everybody's wondering, do I look like, do I have enough makeup? There's going to be so many guys, there's so many girls over there. Oh, you know what, let me look. Serious? Are you serious? Who are you fooling? You know, it's so, uh, usually I prepare for a class like this. I didn't want to prepare, why? Because I didn't want you guys to think that you're coming to a lecture where I'm going to be over here trying to brainwash you guys. When within due time, you should be brainwashed because it's the best life in the world. Some people call, you know, they, they'll see me in the street, they're like, oh, but I'm like, not a rabbi, bro, what's wrong with you? Do I look like a rabbi because I got a beard? The people in Williamsburg have beards, they're not rabbis. My dog has a beard, it's not a rabbi. But I'll tell you one thing. I had a lot of friends growing up. The majority of my friends today, unfortunately, are on some serious drugs. That's why they didn't have no proper guidance. I came from a house where... My parents, they really like, even though like, 
they wouldn't yell at us, but they would show us how much they cared. And if you see my siblings, I'm not trying to gas my family, but I know that if you love your kids well enough, they'll be on the right path. And I know all your parents love you because you guys are here tonight. So I know you guys are on the right path. Um, what can I tell you? What can I tell you guys to make you understand where I'm coming from? I'm not too old, I'm 26 years old. I'm not the richest guy in the world. I'm not trying to be the richest guy to be very honest with you. If you have that much money, you're gonna have that much problems. I don't look for too much fame. Sometimes people see me in the street, they're like, hey, hey, you're, you're, you're the kosher boys guy. I'm like, yeah, shit, please. I don't need it, it's not gonna help me. Nobody at my funeral is gonna come up to me and be like, hey, you know, this guy is the kosher boys guy. He has so much money, who cares, he's gone. <laughs> Today I visited my friend, Abu Khan. It's actually why we did this lecture. And I'll tell you one thing I learned about Abu Khan. He was a Jew until the death of him. Kiddush Hashem. He's like, yo, let me take off my keeper. If I'm going to do something wrong, let me take off my keeper. If I'm going to do something right, let me put on my yarmulke. I would see him, and I wasn't really religious or observant at that time, but I would see him. I was like, I want to be like this guy. He knew how to do everything. Every finger he had, he had a talent for every finger. He knew how to sing, he knew how to dance, he knew how to rap, he knew how to dress. He was. Most of all, he was very, very collected spiritually. He would often be sleeping in my house. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd see this guy's reading. Reading Zohar. Very deep stuff. I'm like, this guy's like 25, 26. What does he understand about these deep things? Sometimes your parents will tell you something and you'd be like, oh, what do they know? They don't understand me. <laughs> Nobody understands me. It's me, 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 me. Nobody understands me. What do you mean your parents don't understand me? What do you mean they don't understand me? You know, my son, my daughter, they're very energetic, very. My babysitter is here. Actually, give a round of applause for my babysitter. She came here today. Very, very good. I know it's funny. I told her, I'd like to see you. I'd like to come by and bring a few friends. And look, Baruch Hashem, she, she brought a few Ashit Chayans over here. Who I very, I applaud you. Thank you very much for coming. But she can attest to my kids. She'll tell you. My kids are very, very wild. Very wild. But they're smart. They're very, very intelligent. And they know exactly what they want. I guess they get it from their parents, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but my son, if he falls from the couch to the floor, I have a heart attack. I'm like, <gasps> my son just fell. Can you only imagine if the parents have to endure pain from their grown kid? Or has for shalom, somebody has to play the funeral for their kid? Do you understand what that is? Before you leave the house, ask, are my parents happy with me? Is my wife happy with me? Is my husband happy with me? Where am I going? What am I doing? Is it important? Is it going to help me grow or not? You know what I tell people? I said, if you do something good, think about heaven. If you do something bad, think about hell. Very simple. It's not a rocket science. As people say, oh, you're too religious. No such thing as religious. There's a good person and there's a bad person. When a person does bad, he knows I'm doing bad. Cut and dry. You know when you're doing bad. Somebody knows when he's lost in the sauce. You guys heard of that term? I'm lost in the sauce. People know when they're off the derrick. I have a good friend of mine who just came, his name is Zahari. Good friend of mine. I have a good Shabbat with him every time I'm with him. So, now that this class is a jam session and a lecture, we're gonna start one song, and after this I got a topic that's gonna blow your mind away, so. This is an Italian song, it's called Caruso. So, I like to take these songs and do my own thing with them. Bear with me, I know so many people are like gangsta, like hip hop, Stuff. You're not gonna get that hit tonight. <laughs> Let me get a round of applause for my friend Simcha. He's one of the most talented musicians we have in our community. He came here to support us. By the way, he's single, so whoever wants him. If I was a girl, I'd marry him. Right? She is a love my love 
I said this last week also. Let's say somebody's really bothering you, bothering you. This girl insulted you. She said something on Facebook. Or this guy is grilling you in the streets, all talking about you. Me personally, I, I don't hold too many grudges. I might hold a grudge for like a couple of hours, couple of days. Depends how serious the situation is. Especially against another Jew. You kidding me? Never. Too many people in the world hate us. There's no reason for us to hate each other. You know, the current situation in the world is very serious. I don't think people understand. They're, they're, they're watching TV, but they're not watching what they should be watching on TV. Politics all over the world. Everybody's at war. Do you ever think about what would happen tomorrow if God forbid, boom! Fresh metals, legal armed forces. What's going to happen? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You can't do nothing. Then you're going to say, Hashem, please help me. Please, thank you for everything. Please help me now. Why are you asking Hashem now? Even myself. Sometimes when I put on tefillin, how many people here put on tefillin? Be honest. I respect the people that did not raise their hands because you're honest. And I'll tell you honestly, I may look like I'm super religious, but there's days where I miss tefillin. Straight up. There's days where I forget to pray. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm only human. I don't have it in my schedule yet. There's days where I wake up late. You know how I plan to fill it? Come on, bro. What are you doing? Are you serious? That's how you put on the film? I tell myself. I look at myself. I want, I want to slap myself when I do that. I'm like, Abby, what are you doing? You put on the film for five seconds. Which you eat for 30 minutes. Five seconds you put on the film. And I'll be honest, I think Hashem is even thankful for that. Hashem is thankful that you notice it for one second. My job is not to make people come here and become religious. I never like to make people become religious. You know, sometimes when somebody's so passionate about something, let's say you have a way to make business and you know how to make money, or you found this way that you know you can bring positivity and you want to share it with somebody. Of course you want to share it. Like, listen, you know, I got this new deal. There's so much money to be made. There's so many good things I can have. Come join me. They want people to join them. That's the way I feel about religion. I find it to be so amazing that I can't like hold myself. When I see somebody like this, I'm like, yo, did you pray? You doing something to change yourself? It's important. My job is to make sure that you guys are going to become mentions, Eshet Chaimans. You guys are not going to need to come to a lecture. You're going to pick up a book and read yourself. People are going to ask, did you learn? You learn? Me personally, I can't say that I learned. I can't say I learned Torah every day. But a man has an obligation every single day to learn Torah. At least make some type of time for it. You know how you have time for for trading stocks or for school, or you have time to eat breakfast in the morning. It's just as important to say thank you, Rosh every day. A lot of us take so many things for granted, especially myself. But I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you the most successful way to live your life, and I'm telling you for myself. Even if you're not going to be happy. Always blame yourself. Always be rough on yourself. You know why? Because every human being has room for improvement. Nobody's perfect. Shem didn't make perfect people. He wouldn't have made us then if he made us perfect. No such thing. I one time went with my mom to a rabbi in Brooklyn. This is when I really fell in love with Judaism. I'm like, yo. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam shalom asani goi. You know what that is? Thank you for not making me a, 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 a non-Jew. And I'll tell you why. So we go to this rabbi. Big rabbi. Big rabbi. Holy, holy guy. <laughs> and I left my bottle there. Remember, I left my bottle. I came back four or five months later. And the guy came up and goes, like, you, you left your bottle. Dude. Listen to what I just said. I left a bottle. A bottle of water. In his office, and I came back four or five months later. He says, well, What did you do? You left your bottle. He said, Thank God you came. Thank you. He said, Thank God that you came. Can you imagine that? How many of you people can say that they're that honest? I can't. Honestly, I can't. Who am I going to lie to you? What do you think I'm an angel? I can't say I'm that honest. You stop this, we try. The guy, that's why I fell in love with Judaism. I'm like, look, this guy doesn't even know me. He doesn't even know me. I left the bottle. He could have threw the bottle in the garbage. All in spring. That's what I'm saying? But he, he didn't. Why? Because he's a Jew. He shows you the real thing of a Jew. Always be honest. Try not to hurt nobody's feelings. Be yashar. Be a straight up human being. People respect you for that. You know, I never used to wear a yarmulke. I didn't like to wear a titit. 
I used to think people in my barbershop were going to laugh at me. Until I put on my yarmulke and tzitzit, people gave me so much respect. Like, hey, you're Jewish, Jewish. Yeah. So you got a problem with that? <laughs> I'm proud to be Jewish. Listen to me, you guys are not even a fraction of Jewish. You guys are 0 .01, 0 .02 of the world. There's 7 billion people out there. Only 20 million of you. You guys, we're invisible. But we make the most noise. Anybody ever thought of that? There's so many things that they could talk about on New York One News. Why do they always talk about Israel all the time? Israel, 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 Israel. There's so many swastikas being drawn all over the place. We should be thankful every day because we don't have to live through them. Because today, Baruch Hashem, we have people that will protect us. But back in the day in Uzbekistan, the grandparents had no protection. They had to hide the fact that they were Jewish. I'll tell you one thing. Rabbi Mizrahi says this all the time. He goes like, I saw pictures of people back in the day in Uzbekistan, how women used to dress, how men used to dress. If you see it, you can consider nobody here religious. They cover their hair, the women over there, they used to look like, they used to wear a hijab, very humble. The men all had beards. Tradition. Tradition. They didn't come over here to New York and say, hey, we live in Manhattan, yeah, yes, everything is good, Baruch Hashem. They didn't say that. They have tradition. And I'll tell you why I'm very, very big on tradition. Some people think I'm too strict. I don't think I'm too strict. I'll tell you what it is. Common sense, basic English. And listen to this and remember this. Don't forget this. Your grandparents. Who still has grandparents? Raise their hand. Baruch Hashem. They live until 120. Now, do you consider your grandparents fools? I didn't hear you guys. No, great. I don't, I don't consider them fools either. Do you consider their parents to be fools? No. So we can obviously all attest to the fact that they were much smarter than us and their grandparents were much, much smarter than them, correct or no? Now imagine all of you men and women are building something. You guys are going to school or you're building a house and trying to build your reputation brick by brick, brick by brick. And somebody comes and just, who cares about all this? <laughs> I live in New York. This girl's beautiful. This guy's born Jewish. So what? Have Shabbat dinner. We're gonna have a rabbi come to the chuppah. I'm gonna sing Hava Nagila. <laughs> what did your grandparents fight through anti-Semitism? Have to come over here to get all their money robbed for you guys to live over here. Anybody ever said thank you for that? People used to have to hide that they were Jewish. Our grandparents, why do you think they left? Why do you think you guys are here, Michal? Why are you here at all? Doesn't matter if you came from Iran, Uzbekistan. Why are you here? Because your family couldn't live there, so they came over here where people like us. And I'll tell you why sometimes <coughs> Jewish people stick out. And I said it last week and I'll say it again. You guys are all born talented. You're all born good looking. You're all born smart. You're extraterrestrial. You're extra. You ever seen the movie X Men? You guys are all mutants. You have extra, extra. Baruch Hashem, that's yourself. My man. And that's why you gotta carry yourself like a representation of Hashem. Both women and men. People look at you in the street, they say, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. You know what I hate about headlines sometimes? We like to miss everything up. Jewish guy robs this. Jewish guy did this. Why does it have to be labeled? Why? Because we are a representation. You put on a yarmulke, all of a sudden you have a bullseye on your head. They see a Jewish woman, they're like, oh, you gotta, as a Jewish woman, you know what? Let me tell you something. A woman is 50 times older than a man. 50, 50, 100 times. The level of a woman you can't compare. I say this to the females for you to understand this. You guys are young, Bezrat Hashem. One, two more years, you guys are older, I have to get married, Bezrat Hashem. I didn't hear a man. That's what sucks. Woman? You know what a woman is? How about this? I'll tell you something. You guys are young, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. A man is Ephes, zero without a woman. I'll explain to you how. You can bring a woman groceries. She cannot, you cannot make food. She has to make food. You can bring her seeds. She's going to make your baby. You give her a house. She'll make it a home. You're nothing about a woman. But it's also important for the women to understand who they are. It's important. A lot of you don't pick and choose your soulmates in life. I know, I'm sure there's 16, 17, a lot of people are dating, I know, because I know personally, all well, you guys. A few of you people I spoke to about this relationship stuff. And uh, I applaud 
the fact that she was talking to Jewish people at least. But I'll tell you, to waste time, I got a few people that can't find themselves. There's no girls over there, Rabbi, all these girls, they're, they're in the clubs, they're on Facebook, all these girls. Well, what do you mean there's no guys in the clubs? Well, I'm sitting next to a bunch of great people now. Who knows? That's why I want to make this class co-ed for people to come. They can meet each other. At least you keep it to yourself. But I tell you one thing in life, don't be too picky. Very important. I know people, they're picky and they end up by themselves. Or they want too much and they end up by themselves. Everybody is the same. If you have no pride, everybody's the same. Doesn't matter how beautiful you once were or how you were before, everybody's the same. If you want to make peace, you'll make peace. It doesn't matter who you with. You know, I was at a wedding two weeks ago, three weeks ago. My friend was here with me. I'm not going to say the couple's name. But they had a discomfort at the end of the wedding. At their wedding day. At their wedding day. Can you imagine? At their wedding day. I was, honestly, it was a nightmare for me. I'm like, did they just get married? Their wedding. There was so much ainara, so much hate, so much jealousy in the air that it caused this couple to argue over something small. There's many people out there that they don't want the best for you. They don't want to see you succeed. I want to see you do good. Remember this line. I want to see you do good. It's not better than me. You heard? You heard? Listen to what I said. I want to see you do good. It's not better than me. They say if you want your prayers to be answered, the best thing to do is pray for somebody else. Automatically, you, your prayers get answered. Sometimes I talk to Hashem, I feel embarrassed to ask him sometimes. Hashem, give me money. Give me this. There's people that know food. Everybody has their own room over here. They have their own phones. They chill. They get tape parties. They go out. The girls go out. Moral of my story, be thankful for what you have. Because chas for shalom, if it's gone, you will regret it. I want to thank you once again, all of you guys, for coming. I think you guys are an amazing crowd. This is the second week. I didn't expect this many people to come. Baruch Hashem, you guys came again. This is the third time. You're right. I'm so sorry. This is the third time, but this is the second. This is the second time we had a crowd like this. You're right. I love you. So I'm going to share with you guys one more song. Then I have one last, one more last topic. Then I'm going to wrap it up. Do what I read. Anybody seen the movie The Godfather? Who knows the sounds? Who knows the Godfather songs? So this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a song that I turned into a Hebrew song. Hopefully we'll sing it at your wedding as at your chopa because it's, it's a beautiful song. Let's do it. <clears throat>
said, I noticed there was something of because I was speaking from the heart. So whoever's paying attention, I appreciate you. Whoever isn't, maybe I'm not interested enough. A lot of people think so. <clears throat> so, I wish for you guys something that I wish for myself, something you cannot buy with money. Remember this, because I told it to you. Remember, Ami Benjamin said you could buy anything, even health. Well, you're not going to buy this. Who knows what it is? You could always buy happiness. Peace of mind. When a person's mind is not at peace, he cannot do anything. He cannot work, he cannot think, he cannot love, he can't do nothing. You have no peace of mind. How do you get peace of mind? With good friends, good surroundings, supportive family members. You know what it is? I think everybody knows how to give advice, but they really don't know how to take advice, realistically. Meaning, anybody know what a maze is? Now sometimes, if you're looking at a maze from the top, you're like, oh, I know, you can have a huge hole left, right? But what if you're stuck in a maze? You don't know how to get out, right? That's the perspective of one person's life to another person's life. You see, you're like, oh, you think you got problems? Why you don't got problems? What's your problems? Oh, this is what you got, this is you are done, you see? Uh, what does that mean? We think we have the antidote to everybody's problems, because yeah, it's easy to judge from the side. Peace of mind is something that's going to take you a lifetime to acquire. You know, my grandfather, he never had peace of mind. He did the majority of your grandparents' weddings and your parents' weddings, I can promise you that. He never had peace of mind. He had so much in him, he had to get it down all the time. He used to never have peace. Over here, his brother died, his, his mother, his, his family. You know how many siblings my grandfather lost? Two or three siblings, if not more. You know, in Uzbekistan, they used to have a little heater where you used to put your feet, but it was fire in there. This way, it was called a sandal. My grandfather lost two of his siblings in the fire. They burned. Talk about peace of mind. How can you live after that? We can't live like that after that. Tell you one thing, <clears throat> and with this, we're going to finish all my songs. Always be honest, always be kind, always smile, and people are going to want to draw themselves to you. Be honest, be a Jew, that's what I tell people, be a Jew. They have, you know, they have a thing, one time some guy says, I know this one guy, he Jewed me. You know what that means? He cheated. That's what, that's what people call Jewish people, cheaters. Cheaters. <laughs> I left a bottle at the rabbi's house, the rabbi didn't even throw out the bottle. Cheaters. so little of us so they judge us real quick like I said I wish for you guys to have peace of mind the only way you'll have peace of mind and I noticed this a couple of weeks ago everybody used to tell me about it but I'm talking personal prayer who knows how to read in Hebrew who doesn't I have a question for you is that an excuse you think God doesn't understand how you feel you can say to him in English God I'm upset please help me what do I gotta do Thank you so much for giving me parents, for giving me kids, giving me a husband, wife, money, house, vacations. We forget the important things. Shalom Aleichem, Lord Rafael. Once again, I tell you from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate everybody who came tonight. I hope you guys come more for this, why? Because these topics are only going to get more serious. I'm not trying to be a rabbi, to be honest with you. I'm far from it. Every time I speak to you guys, I'm only teaching myself. Because I have yet to learn. I'm young. I'm still foolish. They say, Make yourself a rabbi and you're going to acquire yourself a friend. Same thing I tell for boys and girls. Find yourself friends. That when they see you do something wrong, they'll tell you, yo, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm sorry. You're wrong. You're wrong. Only your real friends will tell you in your face that you're wrong. Fake friends are like, oh yeah, you don't need that, forget that, we should move on. Real friends, they'll see there's a gap in your life. They'll be like, yo, listen, you're wrong. This is what you should do. 
A lot of people don't understand, you know, when I, I used to, I'm not going to say what I did because it's inappropriate. When I was younger, I was in a lot of trouble. And I remember some guy was sitting with me at a table and he said to me, you don't got to go home? I said, no, I'm 20 years old, 19 years old. My parents know where I am. He goes, wait till you get married. <laughs> he said, wait till you get married. He goes, when you're going to get older, you can understand life. I'm like, dude, you don't know what I've been through. I've been through a lot when I'm 19. I'm a gangster. He goes like, you have yet to learn, my friend. He looked at me and he said like this. <laughs> yeah, he should stop with the guy. He said, I'll talk to you soon. Guess what? He was right. The more you think you know, the more you learn and find out that you didn't know Jack. Did you hear what I said? The more you think you know, the more you find out in the future that you were a fool the whole time. They have this place that uh, a lot of people go to, it's called the escape room. Who heard of it? Imagine you go to the escape room and you're stuck to the last piece, the last, last puzzle. And it was right in front of you the whole time, you're like, what a fool. How did you think I was going to do it? That's what life is. You never know what's going to come at you. Stay positive, stay strong, stay spiritual. If you need my help, you can message me on Facebook. I don't need no money from you, like I said. Mr. Yonatanov, you are perfectly on time. Come inside. That's a tzaddik. Give a round of applause for my friend, Mr. Yonatanov. He's a tzaddik. He's a good friend of mine. I appreciate him. He's a really honest person. Always happy, always smiling. I saw you all smiling. Once again, if you guys ever need my help, you guys know where to find me. With whatever I can do, I help you. I wish you guys peace of mind. Be loyal to yourself, loyal to your parents, loyal to your spouse. Loyal to Hashem, don't forget Hashem who runs the world. It says right here, Dalif Nemi Ataumed, know before whom you are standing. Everything is great. Everything in life is great. There's not, no such thing as bad. You know why? Because everything is from Hashem. Whatever you're going through in life, Shlomo Amalek said, Gam This too shall pass. So, for my dear friend, that just came. I'm gonna sing a song that we sing every time at the end of the chuppah and at the end of this class. This is a song that we should never forget and I'm gonna be singing every one of my classes at the end because this is the way we get out.
Thank you so much for coming to this event. You guys made my night a rough week. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you in two weeks. This is by midnight. Bring your friends next time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Somebody was crying. Nice. Round of applause, my friend, Mr. Simpo. If you have any respect, don't leave. We have a lot We'll be done soon. Appreciate it. Boys, do not leave. We have Aravit. If you're a man, you stay. If you're a girl, you can leave.